A number of congratulations, ensemble, feature. Did you come in here with these kinds of expectations? Uh, oh God, you know, I literally, um, I really try not to have expectations. Yeah. And tonight, Anne and I were just saying, it is so pleasurable to see other people, especially interesting people that can use comedy and, and for actors to be up there, you know, they, they do have a way to command right. a night. And for people that are used to being behind the camera, it is more comfortable to stay in your chair, <laughs> you know, it really is. Right. That being said, recognition is the only pathway that filmmakers do have, really, for continuing their work. So one has to participate, be grateful, mm -hmm. which we are, you know, it just isn't easy somehow. Oh, you know, well, um, I mean, this, I would imagine, just the whole trajectory of this movie is something that you probably couldn't have imagined that it would end I mean it's a terrific movie and I think you must have known that when it was coming together maybe you tell me but but uh, it's been a long journey right I mean no it has it has I think um, the, the, the three of us are attracted to stories that yeah. are not immediately seen as commercial yeah. um, they may be filmed in regions that are not well known and therefore don't have an immediate way to be presented or advertised mm -hmm. and so it, that does make the journey long it yeah. really does and, and yet um, and even but just in terms of literally if this is Sundance was in January right? Right, right and you might I don't know when you finished it but but it's 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 almost it's like the Hurt Locker in a way where this movie that that played the year before Toronto and people it only picked up steam as it went along normally movies kind of fade here I think people continue to discover it so that's that is so true, so truly due to the efforts of Roadside and mm -hmm. uh, a Roadside Attraction yeah. distributor, and yeah. um, they've done just a very very artful and actually I gotta say like generous yeah. way of distributing because they have allowed the film to travel to places that literally only had Shrek. <laughs> it was a mono diet of right. Shrek. I mean, even though Winter's Bone poster was in the same lobby in different theaters in Arkansas and Southern Missouri with Shrek. Yeah. The fact is, there was another option. And what meant a lot, I think, was that it was an option from, from the region. Mm -hmm. It was an option that had topography and landscape and characters, animals, details, accents. What brought you to that region when you guys decided to write and direct and you know, take on this story? Why, of all the things you could have done, obviously it was a, turned out to be a great choice, but why? The book, yeah. Daniel Daniel Woodrell's yeah. novel, grabbed us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a kind of thing when you read something and it kind of is electric in your hand, and you realize that there's an American storyteller that you may or may not have heard of, mm -hmm. and he's spun a very strong tale, mm -hmm. and it's in a place that I, that a lot of us don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. We don't know Ree's life. We don't know too much about her. So, how, you know, that makes it even riper and and and, and um, more of a draw for us. Mm -hmm. And last thing I'll bother you with, we had yes. uh, John and Dale were up here when they after they won, and I got to talk to them a little bit about their performances. But the obvious, the glaring absence tonight is Jennifer, and so I'm leaving it to you if you can talk sort of what made you decide she was the person to go to, and what is it that she did that made her? I mean, it was fantastic, and I think probably the beginning of a lot of great things. So. What what made you think? What made you see that before everybody else saw? It? Oh God! You know, it wasn't it wasn't before everybody else because um, Ariaga had yeah, cast her and in the his poker, film. Yes, yeah, and the poker and Lori Petty exactly. Yeah. So, but I it was very actually good for me yeah. that I had not seen either of those films. Mm -hmm. That Jennifer actually came into a casting session much like all the yeah. uh, well, not much like just mm -hmm. like the other women. What Jennifer immediately floored us with was that she read the script very beautifully. Mm -hmm. She put a lot of effort, a lot of thought into it. She cared about the role already. She and her mother actually had, had a discussion about it. Wow. Uh, she has a funny story that she tells about that, yeah. where her mother had actually read the book and, and said something. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 so, and Jennifer was ambivalent you know, about her mother's advice, but that, that wasn't the issue. The issue was that when she finally did come to the story on her own terms, mm -hmm. she, was, she had imagined me. Right. She had thought about this girl and what and what it would take and and then was willing to commit and that and then she really convinced me of that.
you know, that's something very important when we do a, a, a low budget film mm -hmm. that no one comes under false pretenses right. that no one gets down to your location with no amenities right. and, and, and feels that they're begrudging the situation right. you know not the case she was she knew what she was getting involved with and then proceeded to pour her guts into it well, congratulations to all of you. It's very exciting. I think this is probably the beginning of uh, a lot of nights like this. So, oh, congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my act together then, you know? Absolutely <laughs> oh, not. Oh, boy. <laughs> right, well, thanks, Thank you. Guys. Thank you.